Hi everybody, my name is Mary Alexa and I'm going to talk to you about Stash tonight. Super excited to be here with Ethan. Uh, a little bit about me, I was actually born in a hospital 22 blocks away from here, spent most of my childhood in New Jersey, and then went to school at University of Michigan. And I will be watching the basketball game later if anybody else wants to join me. Uh, I also like to travel, ski, and hang out on the beach. A lot of people ask me about how I got into product and what that meant, and all product paths are different, but mine started with a very small startup called Consumer Bell. They were trying to bring the product consumer product recalls online. Although crisis management is a very tough space, so it went under a little bit quicker than anybody would have liked, which led to a short stint at General Assembly to my first real product role at American Express. At American Express, I worked on the prepaid platform that offered American Express Serve and Bluebird by American, uh, by American Express that was a partnership with Walmart. And this was my first experience really democratizing financial institutions where we were helping people manage their funds in a digital savvy, cheaper way. And then maybe about, about three years ago, I got a very excited Australian man on the phone asking me if I would be interested in joining their team as the first product manager at Stash. And tonight I'm going to talk to you more about our company and uh, our path into, into banking services. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Stash is a financial services platform and we enable people to save money, invest, and invest in their future, and learn smarter financial habits. We are affordable, relatable, and accessible. If you have a smartphone in your hand, which I'm sure some of you do, even in this right moment, you have access to Stash. If you have access to the internet, even through a public library, you have access to Stash. Uh, we make things affordable. It's $5 a month, I'm um, sorry, not $5 a month. It is $1 a month with $5, just $5 to get started. So there are no minimum balances and a very low monthly subscription fee. And we also wanna make things relatable. We want our users to understand exactly what's going on with their money and how it's working for you. So we're trying to remove all of the financial jargon away from that. For example, does anybody, and maybe somebody in this room actually does, does anybody know what iShares, MS, CI, USA, ESG, Select Fund is? Do you? Oh, well, I didn't know that, but <laughs> it is an ETF that is comprised of companies that are, act socially responsible, and Stash has renamed it Do the Right Thing. Another example, ETF MG Alternative Har Harvest ETF. I have a feeling you also know this one. <laughs> <laughs> so this ETF uh, is comprised of companies in big tobacco and legal marijuana uh, things that are try they're trying to make happen across. So Stash has renamed it Corporate Cannabis. So it just really emphasizes what we're trying to do to make everything on Stash relatable to an everyday person. The four products that we currently offer are a personal brokerage account, traditional and Roth IRAs, custodial accounts for minors, and most recently, and what we're gonna talk about tonight, uh, debit accounts. The whole mission behind Stash is trying to get people to have a better understanding of their financial long-term and short-term goals. And short-term, it includes managing everyday spend. So it's super important to have a product that can help you do that on an everyday basis, not just the long-term IRA that you're gonna start getting uh, payments from when you're 59 and a half. At Stash, we have a product development process that includes these six steps. We focus on empathy, strategy, ideas, building, measuring, and learning. And I'm gonna talk you through how we took this process and applied it to the Stash uh, debit accounts, and that is starting with empathy. In order to understand your your user, you need to understand their problem and what is missing in their life that you could potentially solve. So the big thing here was that we were hearing from our users was that our average stash user was spending three hundred and twenty dollars a year in banking fees. While that doesn't seem like a lot of money to especially people in this room, fifty percent of Americans don't have four hundred dollars 
in savings for an emergency period. So we definitely saw some sort of connection with these two numbers and what we could build out moving forward. The next piece is strategize. You need to come up with a, a vision behind this problem so you could help your users and give them a better financial future. This is where we truly refined our, our, our hypothesis where if, user, if our clients weren't spending money on banking fees, they would be able to start focusing on their long-term savings. They would be able to take that $320 and actually put it into a savings account. And this is where the fun begins, all of the ideas. Uh, you hear product team and everyone automatically assumes that you have all of the ideas and that is the furthest thing from the case. Uh, the idea that we're gonna start with here tonight is the funded wait list that we came up with. I was sitting in a room with one of our marketing team members. We were waiting for our CMO to join us and we were gonna figure out how to get all of the email addresses on the internet onto our wait list. And she comes in and she's like, we're not doing that anymore. We're gonna do a funded wait list. So because Stash is about investing with intent, we wanted that sentiment to carry through when we were building out our banking services. So while we were still building the product, our wait list was a little bit unconventional and we asked our users to set money aside so they could be banking fee free in the future. We also created a, an early adopter group that we called Founders, that if they put in $100 or more into their account, by a certain, well, the first 25,000 of them at, at that, um, they would have a fancy metal card, they would get priority customer service access, there was a cashback promotion and on spend, and then their, um, Oh, they get early access to beta features as we roll them out in the future. So while this was a random brainchild of our CMO and probably our founders and a couple of other people, it turned into over 25,000 people putting $100 aside to spend on a stash debit account that was not ready to be used yet, which it was actually 80,000 people that put money aside at all to use this account, which amounted to over $6 million that was ready to spend when we launched our MVP. And the next phase is build. And any product people in the room will know that the MVP is the first thing that you wanna to get to market. And if there was an engineer up here talking, they would show you this and tell you how all of those little boxes talk to each other. But I'm gonna tell you more about the user flows and what we launched late last year, which was opening an account, card activation, money movement, and that means moving your money from your invest account to your debit account, vice versa, and, uh, debit account to an external bank, and vice versa, including retire and custodial accounts as well, anything on the Stash platform that anybody had. A fee-free ATM locator, I mentioned fee-free again because we wanna make sure that we are reducing the number, the dollar amount of fees that people are spending on an everyday basis. Card replacement, account management, statements, more spending insights to, again, reinforce the message that we are here to help and a customer service portal because your user's experience does not end in the app. And while we certainly built a lot for that uh, late 2018 date, there were still things that we didn't build, such as uh, real-time push notifications, mobile check deposit, or a bill pay solution. And we were okay with that because we wanted to get something to market so we could measure it. And our rollout was very intentional, and the first 90 days were super important for us. Does anybody want to take a stab at how many people we even let have access to open a bank account on day one? A hundred? Anyone else? Well, it was 500, so it was pretty close. Um, and that was very intentional because we wanted to test functionality, we wanted to test the in-app experiences, and we wanted to uh, test lifecycle messaging. Because with each of those rollouts, whether it was 500 on day one or 10,000 uh, a couple weeks later, we wanted to build something, measure it, and learn from it so we could do that again and again. The and learn we did. We, in those first 90 days, while rolling out, we still rolled out um, a handful of iterations, including those 
fancy real-time push notifications. So every time you spend on a Stash Debit account, you get a notification directly to your phone. We learned from our users that this in-app screen about direct deposit was super confusing. So we fixed it, and we added even we even added a button to email the form, the direct deposit form directly to the user's inbox. And most recently, we launched Stockback. Stockback is a true innovation in the reward space, and especially in the debit reward space. While most card rewards encourage more spending, we're encouraging savings. So if you go downstairs to Starbucks and you get your latte, you also get a, frac a fractional share of stock at Starbucks from Stash. This is a reward. It's not a roundup. Um, so with those iterations and many more and many more to come, we felt we were ready to tell the world about our debit product. And we now don't allow just 100, but everybody on the Stash platform, which is over 3 million users at this point, mm -hmm. open a bank account. And our PR team did a wonderful job making sure that everybody knew about it. And our creative team can do a much better job about talking, oh no, video, uh, telling you about Stockback. All right, thank you.